What might men dislike the most if they were to become women? Before we start with the first story, please hit subscribe and ring the notification bell to stay updated with us. Story 1 Obvious answer, menstruation, PCOS, childbirth, just having a period is Even if you don't have huge cramps, it's this whole thing you have to manage every month and expect every month all the time from the age of 11 or 12, or earlier, sometimes. You have to make sure you always have whatever you need, tampons, pads, or access to reusable supplies, and you cannot ever just exist. Maybe you don't have cramps, but you may have an excessive amount of bleeding. You may get sick. You may run a fever every dot f dot month. For two to three days, you may have an extraordinary amount of fatigue and as a result, just f hate life for a whole week before your period. They say girls mature earlier than boys. Of course we do. We have this whole f situation to manage every 21 to 32 days and know it's going to happen again next month. Story 2 Having people just walk up to me and demand my attention and then act like I'm an a or get mad if I don't really want to engage. When my wife is alone, she just gets approached randomly and I've seen it happen from afar. People act like she exists just to interact with them. She's been cornered in rooms by men and felt like she can't leave, and plenty of women have had that same experience. I haven't felt trapped or cornered or have had someone make me physically uncomfortable since I was a young child and would not ever want to feel that way again. Story 3 Constantly having someone grope you in bars or clubs. So many straight guys will put both hands on a woman's waist to get by her, often letting them slip low to the ass. Yet they would never touch another man that way to get by. The expectation that I am also my husband constantly says but I make decisions at work all day and the hundred tiny things decided upon daily fall to me. But that statement 1 implies I don't make any decisions at work and 2 it implies his job is harder. We are in the same field, he's on the technical side and I'm on the acquisition legal side. Our positions constantly interact we don't work together so I have a good idea of what his day looks like. He has seen me sit and knock out a 200-page report documenting an acquisition in a couple weeks while managing others. Story 4 If my ex-husband was to be believed, periods, he said the were disgusting and complained endlessly about all the stuff to do with hygiene products. Also bitterly complained about being deprived of foe that 4-5 to five day time. I'm a very very clean person, would hand wash anything bloodstained before putting it in the laundry. I used to wish he could go through it for perspective. He was married twice more that I know of. I always wondered how the next two coped. Story 5. Not being taken seriously, and when you call attention to it, you're being Being assumed to be ignorant about a subject you have expertise in. Being infantilized. Your hobbies and interests, if feminine coded, will be seen as lesser. Even when you take up a masculine hobby, you will be constantly questioned. You won't be listened to because people assume you don't have any clue what you're talking about. Your concerns will be seen as minimal or lesser. You will be seen as nagging when you bring up a real concern. You bring it up again and again and nothing. You will be ignored and dismissed by doctors. You'll feel very small in this world. Story 6 Being grossly invalidated or ignored for, specifically, reproductive treatments during hospital visits, but also for general health issues. I'll also add to this. Anything that might be ailing a woman will be dismissed as just her period. She might be pregnant. She needs to lose weight. Or she's just there looking to get drugs and male attention or just making it all up. And then if you have an actual problem with your periods, for which hormonal birth control is typically the standard of care, they put up roadblocks to obtaining the medicine you need. Infuriating that the info packet for hormonal birth control only lists the uses as preventing pregnancy. Story 7 Comments on your weight, either too skinny, too fat, too muscular, wrong shape. You can never win. And when you do win, it's in the grossest way possible. I went with my girlfriend to a medical appointment and the doctor was going on and on about her weight, unprompted. Then pointed at my body and said, do what she's doing, it's working for her. He literally used my body to body shame her. And if you do win again, your reward is getting catcalled by strangers, objectifying comments, and unsolicited dick pics. I will do everything in my power to never be a guy that contributes to this. Story 8 Being treated like they are stupid and helpless. Being less physically strong than men. 
facing anger if they do not respond receptively to a stranger's compliments or advances. Being condescended to on a daily basis. Yes, and the worst part, when you clap back you get hit with, no need to have an attitude. Sir, you had the audacity to continue to harass me even after I politely and repeatedly told you no thanks, I do not need nor want help. I had a guy I didn't know come up to me, telling me I was using my program wrong, I wasn't, and proceed to rip my computer mouse out of my hand after I refused to give it to him so he could help. How am I supposed to graciously accept that? My friend was sitting next to me just staring, mouth agape, not believing these things actually happened. Story 9 all the maintenance that is required to create that effortlessly beautiful, sexy, cute look. I remember in high school, there was a girl who would always put in effort to look good. She looked incredible every day. One day she decided not to, and the amount of people coming up to her and checking in on her was just sad. Are you feeling okay? Are you sick? Type comments were wild. I mean, to be honest, suddenly dropping self-care is usually a sign of depression. I feel like those people might have actually cared about her beyond her looks if they were actually checking up on her. In fact, I think it would be a much better world if everyone could get the same attention. Or I might be misunderstanding something here. That's also a possibility. Story 10 The constant criticisms over every little thing by complete strangers. Yeah, I wouldn't miss the, you look angry, why don't you smile, after a very long day of work. Edit. I see that men say they get that as well, didn't know that. Why don't we just let people look angry in peace? I also meant it in a way that people say it to you in a condescending or intimidating way. Or in the worst cases, standing in front of you and not letting you continue to do what you did until you give a smile. Story 11 I think that they'd be shocked at the drastic difference between expectations and respect. Like, as a woman, you're kinda expected to do everything. Mothers to this day are still expected to be the primary caretakers. Wives are still often expected to run the house. And daughters, or even sisters, are still expected to cater to everyone around them, often to the detriment of themselves. But at the same time, you'll still be treated as if you don't know anything about anything. I genuinely don't think some guys out there would be able to handle being so directly and indirectly disrespected on a daily basis while at the same time still being expected to essentially be the backbone that holds everything together. Story 12 No one ever listening to you, ever. Everything you say is questioned, or you say things at work and everyone acts as if they've gone spontaneously deaf, until a man... If you say someone assaulted you, you'll get asked, are you sure, ad nauseum, forever, about everything. You will never just be believed, never. Someone will always ignore, belittle, or question you three women and one man in my department at work before I was laid off. All on the same level with the same job description. One woman being the manager. And we would be asked opinions on things, like how to go about fixing a certain issue, etc. And we were still asked, well, what did male employee think? Like, do my skills and knowledge of this job I've done for five years count? For nothing. The male employee was older and out of the loop with the way new things were working. We had, if anything, more knowledge than him on how to efficiently do our jobs. Yet we were always questioned like silly little girls who couldn't possibly know anything. For a time, my husband worked in the same department and no my male boss thought my husband was doing my work. When honestly, it was the other way around. I was working huge projects and helping my husband get things done while he was swamped. The audacity. I worked in it, a heavily male-dominated industry. For years, there were almost no women in that department. It was rampant with sexism. Some of the comments and conversations were shocking. Story 13 Trans man here. I've lived as both a man and a woman in my adult life. A couple of things. Women don't get taken very seriously in a lot of aspects, especially in certain subcultures. I grew up in the American South, and there was always still a lot of oh sweetie type patronization that I just haven't experienced as a man, and I think a lot of men would be wholly unprepared for it. Not that every man is always taken seriously, but a lot of men I've known are generally used to being at least listened to when they've had a complaint or something, for instance at work. Secondly, women also are expected to be pleasing and accommodating, and not raise a fuss or be rude. A great example I have was when I was working, living as a woman, as a vet tech, in a very rural place. I was up front with two other technicians, a man and a woman, when a client came in the door. He was an old man who we all recognized and he would talk a lot just about the good old days and folks he used to know and all. That every time he was in, and we were busy. 
He came up and started chatting with all of us, and about 30 seconds later, my male co-worker just kind of waved and walked away. The woman and I, bound by our upbringings, felt compelled to stand there going, oh wow, that's so interesting for the next hour, while trying to gently steer the conversation towards us leaving and getting back to work. But if we had done the same thing as he did, it would have been rude, and we definitely would have been scolded. Lastly, but really in the same vein as the previous bullet point, there's a lot of difficulty if you want to be direct about something as a woman. When I lived as a woman, I'd hear from my husband, you need to march down into your boss's office and tell him, this is how it has to be, you can't do X and Y and more, that's not okay, and so on. He didn't seem to understand that the reaction to pretty much any woman doing that is immediately going to be, ugh, what a bitch, and nobody will ever listen to the rest, even if you're making a good point, it doesn't matter. Those are just some things that come to mind. For what it's worth, living as a man does come with some unique challenges too. Story 14 ITT men's responses to what it's like to be a woman, not knowing how bad it actually is. The worst thing about being a woman is the patriarchy, and women being inherently expected to cater basically in every aspect to men. At home we are expected to do literally everything. When children come, we are expected to do everything. Even at work we have to act like men to get ahead. People saying periods, bras and cat call not get it. And even when women do try to act more masculine at work, it's like walking a tightrope. Only it's not a rope. It's a string. Being aggressive is overlooked for guys. Women who do it are bitches. Try to take charge of a team in chaos, even though you don't have the title to do so. A dude is showing leadership. A woman is overstepping. Men get promoted on their potential. Women have to do work a level above their title before they get the promotion and the raise that comes with it. Even trying to talk sports. A guy does it and it's normal. A woman tries it even if she is passionate about sports and she's trying too hard. Bosses will just assume you don't want the challenging assignments or business travel and just pick a guy and tell you later. All that. And then yeah, when you get home, you're expected to do all the cooking, cleaning, remembering if you need butter or laundry detergent. Planning vacations becomes your job, buying gifts for the holidays. Also on you. You'll be lucky to get a robe. Deciding if you need a cleaner plumber handyman will be your job and picking them, and scheduling. Oh, and by the way, trying to smooth things over when anyone is upset is also going to be your job. Far worse after kids come. There's an automatic default if you're exclusively breastfeeding, but soon it's mom's job to do everything. The baby takes the bottle from you better. The baby calms down faster if you go soothe them, and I've got a morning meeting again. I don't know how to do all this laundry without shrinking everything. Oh wait, kids grow? What size clothes, shoes do they wear? I can't remember. They need to see doctors on the regular? Who can keep track? Who is their pediatrician? And the dentist? For baby teeth? Kids go to eye doctors too? W-E-H-E. -E. You have to plan outfits for spirit days at school? I'm lucky if I remember what grade they're in. And I'm supposed to care about their teacher's name or their favorite subject? No way. You're supposed to bring a gift to their friend's birthday party and wrap it and remember the date and location? Insanity! Story 15 Trans mask non-binary person here. And because I have a foot in both worlds, I think it'd be the fact that when I presented female in work and social situations, my opinion wasn't respected. I wasn't listened to. I was dismissed, exploited and underpaid. And now that I present more masculinity, my boundaries are less likely to be challenged people are more likely to listen when I speak. And men make room for me. It's been a wild ride to realize that people are treating me so differently based on the assumptions they're making about who I am. And it really changes the way people interact with me. All right, folks, that's a wrap. If you like this, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. You can also share your those in the comment below.